pendant. PNB rock. I didn't sleep last night. I slept one hour. And I almost missed my Spotify meme, which was about two hours ago. Because that's the only time I slept. Um, me and PNB weren't the best of friends. Um, but we communicated a lot, especially during the last couple of months. PNB rock has been independent. PNB Rock has overcame a lot of things in his life. And I talked to him. I talked to his manager. Everybody who's posting him up now, they were not listening and not responding to none of his messages when it came to trying to give him a verse. I sat there and listened to them tell me like, yo, you know, these niggas, they all fuck with him when he was hot. They wouldn't fuck with him now. Don't let this. I'm going to tell the real story. And I'm going to also get to, because i seen social media trying to get at me, and I'm like, y'all niggas is tweaking. And also, I don't know in what world y'all live in, I don't ask your permission. But we're going to get to that. PNB Rock, before an artist, before a public figure, he's a father. He's a father. He has a daughter. He's someone's son. He was someone's boyfriend. He was someone trying to build a future. These things all trump music. It's important that I point that out. Because everybody has think pieces these days. Everybody has, oh shit, well, if this didn't happen, everybody has all of this. But let me tell you, this is how life is played. If you know, I always say this about football. There's a lot of Monday morning quarterbacks. If you could play football, chess, shit, even gambling, blackjack in reverse, if you knew the outcome before you had to make the decisions, everybody will win. But this is life. I'm saddened today for his family. I'm saddened today for his daughter. That is the first and utmost things that, that uh, weigh in on me when I think about PNB Rock. Not him as an artist. When I think about him as an artist, I think about the fake niggas who are now posting RIP PNB Rock. I think about that. I think about that. And I don't want to go down that road because it's very dangerous and torturous. And you become what I believe a lot of people become when they start mourning. When you start to mourn, you look for a scapegoat. The person who's responsible for his death is some lunatic with a gun. Let's not try to pawn it off to somebody else. Maybe was mistakes made? Was should he not have been there? Of course. But there's no other reason why he's dead than the person who took his life. We have to keep the focus on why. So I know a lot of people want me to come on here and slam the girlfriend. Nah. Y'all want me to give a lecture, yo. Y'all are rappers. Y'all should have security. Should, but nah. For a lot of people, y people that's watching, y'all think being a celebrity or being a rapper is like you're a born again alien. I see everybody with think pieces. Yo, he should have checked in. But this is where you get to realize it's ridiculous. PNB Rock has been living in L.A. Every time they talk about somebody who got killed in L.A., with the exception of Pop Smoke, these niggas have been living in L.A. They're not from L.A. I'll give you an example. I've seen YB and Namir comment on this. He's not from L.A. He lives in L.A. He's been living there. A lot of rappers go there and live there. Lil TJ, who got shot, well, actually on the East Coast, but he got a residence in L.A. But they're all living in L.A. So this whole check-in thing, 
it's not like you're checking like when I hear checking in if all these people want to push that narrative that's like if you're like oh this is a guest who's coming here for a weekend or coming here for some these guys have been living there I want to be very clear I'm saddened for his family I'm saddened for him Um, For you to understand I got to give you some context In the last four or five months PNB Rock has um He's been independent. I'm trying to com maintain composure. The most pretentious motherfuckers was like, oh, Ak, you put up a, a, a clip. Oh, you're trying to benefit off of it. How disingenuous is that? Everybody who would be saying that never supported the nigga. PNB Rock was trying to schedule an interview with me for six months ago. PNB Rock had zero business being in New York. PNB Rock did not live in New York anymore. He did not even live in the Northeast Coast. He came out just to do an interview. He wanted to try to jumpstart what he had going on. And I talked to him and his manager. You know what they would all tell me? All these rap niggas switched up on him. All of them. They all switched up on him. They all wouldn't do things or give him whatever the case is because they claimed he wasn't hot. Atlantic cut ties with him. So I want to give you all a real insight into an artist who's now independent. Who me and him, whether it's me and him on a direct group chat or me, him and his manager, we're texting every day. You know these niggas switched up on this nigga when Ak is the person he's like, yo, yo, what's up with this? What you think about this? Yo, connect me with this. I had conversations with his manager multiple times. I'm like, yo, let me try to put you out with Spotify. I'm like, damn, like. You like you guys been in the game like you guys don't know like let me let me try to put you out with some people this is not my job but P and B is someone who I fucked with. Go back to everyday struggle. Go back to 2019. When it came to the end of the year, where we were talking about best albums, I threw his name in the, in, in the mix. I said this is one of my favorite artists. Everybody looked at me like I had 15 heads. I've supported him. He always realized it. And once he got independent, for the last about six months, he's been trying to go and forge that path. Um, maybe it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but I feel a way about it. I feel a way that the majority of people who are now supporting him, claiming that they love him, they all switched up on him. There's a cause and effect, people. If y'all all loved him, maybe he wouldn't have been in that situation. Maybe he would have had shit to do. He couldn't just be at no Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles going on a date with a girl. Maybe he would have had a studio session. Maybe he would be on tour. But none of these rappers fuck with him. They used to. They stopped. This is why I take personal offense. When anybody says it, and this is one of those situations, ain't no nigga could say nothing about me when it comes to like PNB. Um, I blanketly supported him. I blanketly showed him love. We He showed me love too. Let's not make it a one side of the street. He the type of nigga like, yo, act mad times. Because, you know, sometimes I'll be over to Henny be like, yo, act yo, nigga. Yo, you put a wrong Kanye caption on that nigga. You tweaking right now. What's up with you, bro? 
Like, you know, you're talking, there's a Philly accent. I'm like, oh, shit, I got you. Cool ass nigga, bro. The point what I'm trying to say is that um, it's a tragic situation. And in totality, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just at a loss for words, yo. It's to give you a realistic perspective from my view. And, and by the way, for anybody who watches later, I'm not trying to make this about me. But I'm a human, too. And a lot of these guys, whether it was with X, whether it's with PNB Rock, whether it was with any artists I've started to build a relationship with and we're communicating, when I hear that they pass, that shit is it's kind of jarring. Um, yeah, it's hard to talk about shit like this. Um, uh, okay, we'll, we'll try to uh, further and continue the conversation. Um, just that I knocked this out of the park really quickly. First of all, I know Adam or whoever the fuck just got on the heat by Joe Budden for posting some shit. When someone died, let me be very clear, and I'm gonna be very stern when I say this. Ain't no motherfucking media or hip hop nigga could check me. Just let me make that very clear. So I've seen people like, oh, Joe Bun can't check me. Just let me let y'all know that. Facts. Also, let me let me address because I did post something and I seen. Niggas on Twitter because y'all hate you to me. And by the way, I could tell y'all not even, y'all don't even fuck with PNB Rock. Y'all taking this opportunity to try to hate on me. Let me also put this in perspective. Number one, where the fuck was y'all niggas at when he was hitting my phone every fucking day for the last 30 days? We dropped the interview a week ago. You niggas didn't give two fucks. Maybe if y'all cared about some shit, y'all would be like, yo, what's up with this? Yo, you should move differently. Y'all never seen shit till now. So I don't care about nothing of what nobody says. So let, let it be known, nobody could check at. Y'all didn't fuck with this nigga. Y'all wasn't talking to him regularly. Y'all wasn't really trying to help him. Let me tell you what I did. You tell me what you did. When he was alive, not when he's dead. You're making tweets online when he's dead. Let me tell you what I did. He had zero playlist support. He's dropping mad music. Got great music. I love this shit. They sent me the music. I love it. Not to try to violate on my Spotify connects. Because I got a couple Spotify connects. But I ain't trying to violate. Just be like, yo, fuck with this guy. But I'm trying to connect him up. I'm like, talk, I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, how could this shit work? Yo, act, yo. Let's schedule this accordingly. That I could, that I could get the best look. I know they independent. I'm trying to help. Y'all niggas is trying to just now criticize after a nigga died. I don't really fuck with none of y'all for that. Period. If y'all ever accuse a nigga like me of taking advantage, nigga, tell me what you fucking did. And I'll tell you exactly why I posted up that clip yesterday. Because it was relevant to exactly the situation he was in. There's mad more of the interview. Like, that I'm not going to post. I don't. It's relevant. It's relevant to the situation. I don't care what y'all told me with Adam and Joe Budden. Them niggas ain't my daddy, nigga. I make the fucking rules. Let me make this very clear. Any And by the way, I'm standing on this. Any media nigga say shit to me, I'm on y'all head. Y'all don't even want it. Y'all know this is facts. Any nigga say shit to me, I'm on y'all head. It doesn't turn out good. Y'all know, know how it go. The point what I'm trying to say is that this is a nigga who none of y'all fucked with. You know why I came to my podcast, my nigga? Yo, Gilly and Wallow, ain't that ain't, ain't they from Philly? Bro, none of y'all niggas was fucking with PNP. 
You're not fucking with him like that. Y'all not listen to songs and bro, I'm not no AR movie. I'm trying to like, I'm like, yo, I just like you as an artist. I'm supportive. So for anybody would even try to drive a narrative like yo, Ak is oh, Ak is trying to just take advantage. No motherfucker, think about what you're doing. You never cared about the nigga till he died. I dropped a clip with him like five or six days ago. Y'all didn't watch it because the podcast came out. Y'all didn't watch it. Why the fuck is you watching now? Because he died. You don't give a fuck. So that's one of them things like, yo, ain't no, I'm, I'm just warning all y'all media niggas. Y'all say some shit about act. I'm on, I don't get, I'm indiscriminate with my shit too. Y'all know how I get down. Just hold that, please. This ain't a nigga who I never communicated with. This ain't a nigga who wasn't tapping in with me because none of y'all fuck with him. You know, he kept telling me, yo, act. Yo, you know how I think you a real nigga? Because even when niggas just dick around and talking about the hot niggas, if you fuck with my shit, you gon' you gonna mention my name. You gonna bring my name in conversations. Go back to everyday struggle, my nigga. I kept bringing Rock's name when he dropped an album. I don't really fuck with. I don't care about the dick riding shit. So I don't wanna hear niggas on some oh act. Nigga, I dropped one clip. It's relevant to a particular situation, which Obviously, when a nigga loses life, which, by the way, I had to stop myself from getting cynical. Nigga, I was going to be up on, on social media like Kodak, blaming his baby mama and shit like that. I had to stop myself. But this is what goes through a nigga mind when you see somebody who you've been communicating with daily. Daily. They lose their life. So I said, Gillian, nigga, I'm not, I'm not trying to throw no shade at nobody. I'm just trying to say, bro, he locked in with me when there's a lot of other motherfuckers that you would assume before me. Like, a lot of y'all probably be like, Act, yo, you ain't know that nigga that much. Bro, that nigga talked to me. More than a lot of these other niggas, at least in the last couple months when he got out of his situation, he's trying to build. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to throw no shade towards him. That's the point. So anyway... I don't even want to have a conversation about that, but I'm going to tell you, all y'all media niggas, man, listen. Again, the, it, it, I know sometimes I look at me in a certain type of lens. This ain't no Warren Chirac shit where I don't even know these niggas. This is a nigga who I, I, I talk to a lot. I chop it up with a lot. A nigga who call me, text me any time, time of night. I want to hear from y'all niggas, period. But if, but if y'all do want to say some shit, you know I'm ready. Um, this shit fucked me up, bro. Especially the conversation I had with him before. By the way, everything we talked about on camera, let me tell you how I off the record work a lot of times. Bro, these niggas pull up. Yo, me and PMB talked for probably like an hour before we even did this shit. Like, hour two. Like, nigga, sometimes what we vibe out outside the studio is as much as we vibe out in the studio. So it's not, y'all don't see everything on camera. So like, you know what I mean? Because they might want to tell me some shit they don't want everybody to know. And, um, nigga, I seen how the nigga was moving and trying to like build back. And I, I just kept telling him, I'm like, yo, nigga, I just think you're talented. You just got to put this shit together. I don't even want to just throw his manager into the fray, but salute to his manager. His manager never managed artists. That's why, yo, this man you can vouch for it, nigga. I got all the calls, Zeke. Be like, yo, we call Ack a bunch of times. Bro, his manager is in the industry, but they never managed an artist. Not only they really never managed an artist, he's an independent artist. I was texting my nigga earlier today, Carl Cherry. I was like, yo, Carl, bro, I was trying to, like, you know, they asked him about playlists and shit like that, bro. I know that this is outside my bounds. I'm, I'm signed to Spotify for a podcast, but... I like his music this and third. I ain't trying to violate. I ain't trying to throw your number around and just make you feel like you got to fuck with every artist. But this, this is a nigga who I fuck with. So shit on the podcast side. And this is facts on the podcast side. I'm like, yo, let's connect everything up. Yo, let's put it on a, a, a on emails because, you know, that's how corporate companies work. This and third. 
to try to figure this shit out. Like, like I want because they don't have no contact to y'all, and I know one of the reasons why they they want to do the podcast is because yo, they want to link with Spotify. Bro, he got dropped from Atlantic. Atlantic ain't give him shit. I talked to him about this. Atlantic left them niggas out of dry. It was like, yo, all of, they had no contacts. So when y'all say dumb shit and y'all say ignorant shit, I understand why a nigga is in the situation he is. Y'all gonna always say security because y'all think everybody making $10 million a year. Not everybody making $10 million a year. I just got to let y'all know. A nigga who just like, he might be making 500000 a year. He good, but it ain't that good. Where it's like, yo, anytime you step out with security, bro, that's, I know that sounds good for y'all. Like, X should have had security. Like, X is a, was a superstar. Bro, PNB Rock was dropped and was a independent artist, bro. He's trying to make it work. He got a, he got a daughter. He got a girlfriend. He's living in LA, high ass rent. Trying to figure it out, bro. He not stepping out all the time with security. I know y'all going to judge him for some of the stuff he might even sell the podcast where he's like, yo, I just show up dolo, but that's just the reality of it, bro. Like, not everybody just walk around with all security like they could afford it. So, I'm going to just be honest with you. There's probably been mad situations. He'd be like, yo, all right, let's just pop into the spot, eat real quick and dip. That's how it goes. Bro, a lot of people do that. Everybody today, I hate the pretentious shit. Everybody's acting like, oh, PNB was just like out of pocket. He was wild. Why he ain't had security? Man, I'm telling you right now, bro, like every rapper in the game will pop. Like, this is the same thing y'all did to motherfucking um, um, Young Dolph. Bro, no rapper just pays the security just to roll with him 24 hours a day all the time. They, they they take educated risks. They're like, all right, cool. Yo, for Dolph, he's like, yo, this is cookie shop I always go to. I'm going to probably be in there probably 10, 15, picking up this order. I'm out of there. That's the time when niggas had to drop on him. PNB Rock, you know, and again, I, I want to really stay really far away from blaming this girl, bro, like, because we really don't know. My nigga, LA be spooky, nigga. They always told y'all the story, bro. Like, the story of motherfucking LA. Shit, I remember, like, this is Long Beach, too. Remember when I told you the whole thing happened? Nigga, there could have been a shootout at Complex Con, nigga. I'm wide-eyed. I ain't really know what's going on. Like, shit, I told the Complex. They was like, yo, 6 ix 9 charging mad money. They were like, yo, they'll give him some shit just for, like, a quick performance. Super deal. Like, it's like 50 bands. Like, uh, we give you 50 bands to perform real quick. Couple of songs. Future was supposed to headline. They were like, yo, you could go after Future. Bet. Cool. I call him. He's like, I'm about to come pick up that 50. Shotty's like, I'm about to come pick up that 50. Cool. Bet. I guess they tell Future in them. Future them was like, nah, yo, we're the headliners of the show. If you have anybody perform after us or if you were scheduled anyone to perform after us, we're not going to perform. I right, bet. They cut 69 shit. Anyway, they told him they could cut, he could come through for a walkthrough. This ain't a 69 situation. I'm, I'm trying to explain. Just how I even viewed LA. How I, that's not even LA, that's really Long Beach. But just how I viewed the whole situation off of that. Bro, okay, cool. 6 9 is hit me, but whatever. He's on his way. Keep in mind, this is where I complex. I'm complex main commodity. Bro, they got security assigned to me, walking around with me no matter what I do. Cool. Whatever, whatever. I hit my guy who's the top guy. At um complex, I say, yo, yo, uh, um, well, he had six nine number two. I'm like, yo, yo, he like five minutes out, whatever, whatever. I remember when they made the the, the call to security to say, yo, security show up to the front soon because six nine is gonna be at the front of the hotel, which is a high Hyatt Regency. Shadi's hit me like, yo, we two minutes out. I walk up front. There's 15 gang members up there in all red. They waiting out there. This is the reason I told the story. You in LA, my nigga, it's a different scene, bro. You know what I got to realize? Everybody who was security, this is how they, they hired security for the whole shit. This is how they hired the security. They went to the hood. Like, yo, who want to work security? We're going to give you some shirts. Like, this is our daily rate, blah, blah. Bro, everybody in the hood is gang members. 
Oh, all right, we'll, we'll take the job, blah, blah. So when they start calling all, all over the walkie talkie, like, yo, we're going to have 6 9 at this entrance. Yo, we need blah, 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 blah. All y'all report to here. Bro, It's they hired all gang members as securities. LA, nigga, this ain't New York. Everybody hit they real gang member. Like, people like, yo, yo, 6 9 finna show up right here. Like, just be there. Nigga, when I walked up there, like, I'm seeing the Slim 400 and everything. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't really know this was him at first. But I'm giving y'all an essence of what L.A. is. Bro, L.A. is just gangland. So I know a lot of y'all want to think it's some devious shit like his girl was plotting like, okay, I'm going to get him to go on a date and I'm going to drop the location and some killer goons are going to come through. Nah, I'm like, that might have played a part. I'm not, I'm not discounting it. But the point I'm trying to tell y'all is like, bro, L.A., if you go to a restaurant, the niggas who's working in the back might be just gang, nigga. They might be like, they might not be the nigga who's going to do the jug or do the lick or whatever the case is. But they go, they might send a text like, yo, oh shit, yo, that nigga P&B rocking here. That nigga got hella jewelry. Look like he got mad money. Pull up. So that's why I can't really blame the, the chick. I seen it myself. The entire, like, y'all are thinking that it was all civilians in there and, and the girl sent the location to the ops. Bro, you in L.A., the niggas who are working at the restaurants, they gang too. A nigga might be gang banging, but also might be a fry cook, bro. So this is why, like, I don't want to jump on that train. Even though I do believe his girl made some mistakes. Yo, I think his girl made some mistakes. Let me tell y'all something, man. And I, and I want to personalize this on, on PNB Rock Girl. Man, I've... Yo, anybody in here watch Off The Record? Can anybody vouch? Anybody watch Off The Record? Because I'm telling you shit that go down in my real life. I'm going to give you an example. If you ain't watching, I'm going to give you an example. Go watch a Young Blue episode. I said this shit on it. I showed you who I'm dealing with. To be on my, on my ass because this, this is the thing with women, bro. Women only want to stunt for other women on the gram. Only want to stunt. Let me let me say that again. Women only want to stunt for other women on the gram, bro. And a lot of times when women are dating people who are high profile celebrities, that's why. Yo, I learned mad early on. I'm gonna bring it back, and I know this is a tangent. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring everything full circle. In 2013, 2014, I had a girlfriend. That was a girlfriend I had really before I really pop popped. You feel me? We went to Vegas, and me and her, we got in a lot of arguments, and the arguments, a lot of them were like, yo, I can't have fun until I do my YouTube videos, but also, like, we would go out, we were in Vegas, by the way, um, she would be like, yo, why are you acting a certain way, and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna keep it real with you, like, like, you my shorty, so when I go out with you, we take shots, you lit, you just, like, happy, and you just all over me, like, you just happy to be here. Bro, I got to keep my head on a swivel. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you're like, yo, why are you acting? I'm like, yo, bro, like, you know, we don't have nobody out here. And she'd be like, what do you mean? Like, bro, we just having fun. Let me put this in perspective. In her world, even back then, people didn't really know my face. In her world, like, she don't even see the danger. That's the thing with women, bro. Women never see the danger. Bro, I see this every day, nigga. I deal with it every day. Women don't see the danger with shit. Yo, why you acting all uptight and shit? Yo, come on, chill out. Go watch the Young Blue episode. I mentioned it to Young Blue. I said, yo, I'm dealing with a shorty. She keeps saying, damn, yo, why you, like, all you do is play 2K, work, blah, 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 blah. Like, yo, when you gonna really, like, spend time with me? Like, I want, like, take me out type shit. Now, this is a chick I'm kind of fucking with type, you know what I mean? She cool. I bet. She like, yo, damn, you ain't ever going to take me on a date? I'm like, I don't really do the date. I'm like on some future shit, chicken wings and fries. But like, like I understand, you. like, no matter if you thugging on some future shit, you got to understand females. So it's like, she basically just trying to tell you, like, nigga, you got to make me feel special. Like, just kind of, because let me tell you, this, women don't care about men. Women care about the other bitches who are competing with them. I, I got to say that three times. Women don't give a fuck about men. They care about the other bitches who are competing with them. They want to put them bitches in their place. 
They don't care about men at all. So I right, bet. So I told her, I said, yo, I right, bet we're going to go out on a date type shit, right? It's real talk. Go watch the episode. This is like months ago. I said, we're going to go on a date. Bro, I'm going to keep it real with you. I live in rural New Jersey. Like, if you see me, it's going to be random. It ain't never going to be. I ain't on the hot spots or nothing like that. Like, that's the thing. That's the difference with L.A. L.A., they expecting somebody might be lacking out there or there might be somebody that's, like, high profile or whatever. Where I live at, like, and where I be going, you ain't never going to really expect to see no high profile niggas. So you ain't, most likely, you ain't going to be on point to be in that mindset. Like, I'm about to rob a nigga, whatever, whatever. Not saying that's going to make me feel comforted, comforted, but, like, I'm just telling you where I move around at. So anyway... Shorty's like, yo, I bet. Okay, cool. You about to bring me on a date type shit. Now, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. This is what I do. So I really do. I hit my mans in them. I said, yo, actually, like, I, don't, I think she thought we were going to go to a restaurant. I flipped it. I said, I bet. We're going to Top Golf. I don't know if y'all know what Top Golf is. a very popular place. People going, whatever. I, I said, we're going to go to Top Golf. I hit my mans in them. And I say, yo, y'all come through too. Anyway, here's the point. We show up the night, and she gets mad eventually. And this is why I told the story on the Young Blue episode. She was like, yo, I want to be on a date with just you. Because you see, in women's mind, they don't understand the real world. You see, a woman will pull up and be like, they don't, they'll don't. they pull up on academics and not think, academics, how do you have a $2.5 million house a million dollars in cars. You have ordered. How do you get it? They don't realize, nigga, I got some enemies out here. Niggas who, if they see me, they gonna really try to do. They don't think like that. Women is like, women are like delusional. Super delusional. Like a woman will just want to be with you and not realize like, yo, yo, a nigga want to take what you got, nigga. That's a fact. So I bet. She think we finna be on a date by ourselves. Bro, you think I'm stupid, nigga? All right, cool. We go out. She see three of my mans pull up. Bro, she's mad the whole night. I thought you were gonna bring me on a date. You got your friends pulling up. That's not no date. Oh, my God. Like, all that female bullshit, bro. I'm keeping it in a honey with you. I'm like... She like... It's not really a day. Your friends are here. You're talking to them. I'm so I'm trying to be cool with it. I'm trying to be playing with it. I say, yo, I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you. It's like, I said, did you want me to be in a restaurant with you by myself? I said, yo, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Like, I'm I'm only keep my I'm fucking with her. So I'm like, I'm poly and where I'm talking to her. But I'm like, yo, my people's got to be around because. I can't really have time with you if my head ain't if my head ain't on a swivel. She ain't understand that at all. I seen her, yo, bro. She started complaining to her girlfriends. Yo, I don't know why you did this shit. He told me he was gonna bring me on a date, and then all his friends pulled up. This is the exact thing about women. They don't get it. You know what I'm thinking, bro? If I'm gonna be over here giggling and kikiing and ha haing with you, man, there's a nigga over there be like yo. Ain't that motherfucking academics right there? That boy lacking right now. He giggling, cuddling with his bitch on the shit, hitting golf balls. Nigga, we finna try this nigga, man. In her mind, she don't even get it. She don't get it, bro. I'm telling you, I promise you. I remember explaining to her she don't get it. Go watch the Young Blue episode. Because I, I said it to her. I said, yo. If we go, if you want to go on dates, we going to go on group dates. My nigga's going to be with us. Yeah, we could have our alone time, but my nigga's going to be there. Because unless I got official security, like when I mean official security, like a lot of times when I go to Florida, I be having official security. I can't just be focused on you. I got to be like one eye on you, but one eye on a nigga who walking around there, but he got a hoodie on.